Well, thank you everybody for coming this morning. Today I'm delivering our estimate of state revenues available to policymakers during the 2016-2017 session. This is one of the many duties of the Comptroller's Office and is required under Article 3, Section 49A of the Texas Constitution. Our projections are based on the expectation of moderate expansion in the Texas economy and reflect uncertainties in oil prices and the possibility of a slowing global economy. For general purpose spending in 2016-2017, we estimate the available general revenue related funds will be $113 billion as detailed on the charts to my far right. Our Texas state government comes into this legislative session with a projected surplus at the end of the 2014-15 biennium of $7.5 billion as the state's economy recorded even stronger growth than projected over the last two years. Sales tax revenues have been higher than anticipated, thanks in part to a robust oil and natural gas sector during the last 15 months. Other revenue sources, such as motor vehicle sales taxes, have exceeded forecast as well. We estimate that general revenue related collections will be 110 point four billion dollars over the course of the 2016-17 biennium. Together with the surplus from 2014-15 biennium, that brings a projected total net revenue available to nearly $118 billion. After $5 billion is set aside to be transferred to the Rainy Day Fund, as well as the State Highway Fund, as approved during the previous session and by Texas voters last fall, there will be $113 billion available to the legislature for general purpose spending in the 2016-17 biennium. Texas has recovered well from the recession of 2008-2009, and we return to strong growth well ahead of the rest of the country. During the next two years, we believe the state economy will continue to expand, though at a much slower pace than we've seen in recent years. Job growth has been strong in Texas, outpacing job creation in other large states. Our impressive job growth picture of gaining over 1.1 million jobs, as illustrated in the second chart to my right, was a tribute to all sectors of our diverse economy. This growth was stimulated by the shale oil boom, which was fortunate timing for Texas. The increased oil and gas production helped the state offset both weak growth in other sectors of our state economy as well as a drag from the sluggish national recovery. We are well ahead and well aware that oil prices have dropped significantly in recent months. These lower prices will likely lead to a significant slowing in oil exploration and production and thus has dampened our overall economic forecast for the coming biennium. We are fortunate, however, that the Texas of 2014 has a much more diverse economy than in prior decades. Some sectors such as construction and manufacturing will stand to benefit from lower energy prices. Further, lower energy costs have also put more disposable income in the wallets and the pocketbooks, which is always good news for both consumers and retailers alike. This decline in oil prices and its implications for the Texas economy comes at a time when the national economy appears to be picking up steam as evidence by stronger job and economic growth numbers nationally. Strength in the broader economy, such as in construction and professional and business sector services, should help counterbalance a marked slowdown in the Texas energy sector. Overall, we project moderate growth in the state's economy and state revenues. That being said, we must recognize that volatility has significantly increased in recent years. So we will continue to monitor closely the economy and state revenues. And now I would call your attention to the chart to my immediate left, illustrating the volatility in sales taxes in recent years. From 1991 to 2001, sales tax revenues increased every year, ranging from a high of nearly 10% to just under 4% during the last decade of the last century. However, chart three to my left, right here immediately, shows that the 21st century has brought greater volatility in the state sales tax revenue picture. In particularly, 
you can see that we had four occasions between 2002 and 2014 when sales tax revenues declined from one year to the next with the steepest decline in 2010. That precipitous drop came on the heels of negative sales tax growth in 2009. During the other two year period of negative sales tax growth occurred in 2002 and 2003 in the wake of 9-11. On the other, hand, other end extreme volatility spectrum, there has been three occasions when sales tax revenues grew by more than 10%. Texas saw dramatic increases in 2006, 2007, and in 2012. Now I want to call your attention to the chart to my far left over here, which shows that fluctuating oil prices have also been a fact of economic life in Texas here in the recent years. We can see volatility from this chart, which tracks average monthly oil prices between the years of 1991 and 2014. The chart can be viewed as two distinct periods. The monthly average price per barrel ranging from $11 to $34 during the entire decade of 1991 to 2001, a period of low prices, yet one of relative stability. Now compare that with the spikes and the dips of 2002 to 2014, when prices swung from an average monthly high of 134 to a low of $20. In conclusion, this volatility in sales tax collection and oil prices, as illustrated in charts three and charts four to my left, coupled with the fact that sales tax and oil-related taxes are more than 60% of general revenue-related collections, means that my office will keep a very close watch on the state's economy and its revenues in the coming months and over the upcoming biennium. It places a premium on thoughtful analysis and diligent monitoring of the state's economic health. We will update our predictions as necessary to ensure that the legislature and the governor have the absolute best information available to them to keep in the, as they come up in their budgeting decisions. Thank you, and I'm very happy to answer any questions.